Today, I'm going to talk about, in my opinion, the easiest way to use Blender in an actionable way for filmmakers or music video editors. I'm going to take this stock footage, which as you can see is just shot in front of a gray wall, and I'm going to turn it into this creepy cinematic horror shot with a 3D character using some very simple steps in Blender. In the past, doing any compositing with real world footage was very tricky to get right. Well, now things have changed in a massive way because of tools like this. This is Switchlight Studio Open Beta. It is a free AI program which allows you to generate 3D light maps from your video footage. This solves one of the biggest issues you would normally face when compositing, which is light. As filmmakers, you guys know how important light is when it comes to realism, mood. Well, with a tool like this, we no longer need to guesstimate the lighting while filming. We can now change and experience with different setups in real time in our 3D software. So enough of my yapping, let me show you how we can actually do this. So step number one, we need to remove the background from our footage because in this case, I'm going to add my own background and a 3D character later on. Using a green screen is your best bet here, but to keep this as budget friendly as possible, I'm just going to use this stock footage to show you that you can literally film yourself standing in front of a wall and turn it into a cinematic VFX shot if you want. For the background removal, I'm going to use After Effects. Apparently, there's also a background removal tool in Switchlight Open Beta, but admittedly, I haven't tried it out yet, so that is also an option to consider. Either way, I like to use After Effects. All I have to do is drag in my footage, double click on that clip so that it's showing that we're in a layer, select the roto brush up here in the top left, and then just color in over the subject that I want to keep. You want to try and get this purple line around your subject as best as possible. So if you need to, you can hold down alt on your keyboard to switch the brush to red, and then you can draw to cut away from the selection. Once that purple line is roughly outlining your subject, you want to hit page down on your keyboard to move forward a few frames, and you'll see that After Effects does the work and locks onto the edges pretty well. Now there is one last step. As you can see, our subject here has curly hair, which is very hard to mask out. So let's click and hold on the roto brush tool and then select this refine edge tool. Now you can do the same thing, but only for the hair. So start at frame one, and we're just going to color over where the hair is to create this black and white mat, which you can refine using the settings over here on the left. Now that we have our selection, we can just click the freeze button. After Effects will mask that out for us. And once it's finished, we can click back over to the composition tab to see how it looks. So now we just need to render out this footage as an image sequence. So go up to file and export and add this composition to the render queue. For your settings here under output module, you're going to want to export this as either a PNG sequence or an EXR sequence. Also very important for channels here, make sure you select RGB plus alpha. So we're exporting with a transparent background. You can create a new folder for where this image sequence is going to save and then click export. After all that, you should have an image sequence in your folder looking like this. Now we're ready to extract the light maps from Switch Lite. There will be a link in the description to download Light Studio Beta. So important to keep in mind here, the app we're using for this is in open beta, meaning everything regarding price licensing features can change from the time I'm making this video. I think it's important just to lay that out there. Once you download, you're going to be asked to sign in and then you can click to download the AI dependencies. Once everything is all downloaded, we're going to go over to this material extraction section right here. Under input image path, this is the directory where you saved your image sequence from After Effects. So click select For the output directory. This is just where it's going to export the maps out. So click select and you can create a new folder for this. Once you have set that all up, you can click extract and you can monitor the progress of everything from this little terminal at the bottom. All right. So for me, the process took around five minutes. I'm just going to go and find that output folder that I specified in switch light and we can take a look at the results. So as you can see, we now have image maps for all of the channels, which will make up our 3D material. Now, if you're new to 3D, you may be confused on how to set all of these up. Well, the good news is there's actually a free plugin, which will do it all for you for Blender. So let's go back to the main page of Switchlight. And if you scroll to the very bottom here, you can find the link for the Blender plugin download. To install the plugin in Blender, just go up to edit and preferences, go over to the add on section and click install, and then select the Python script that you downloaded from Switchlight. Now, once we enable this and we click up here in the top right, we can scroll down and you'll find our Switchlight Studio plugin, which gives you a PBR directory, which is essentially all of those light maps that we just created. So go ahead and click this folder and we want to navigate to that main folder, which contains all of our light maps and then click load PBR sequence. So now if I scroll through the timeline, you guys can see the image sequence is playing just like a video. The background is still transparent, which is perfect. And now if I add in a light, you can see in real time, this is reacting beautifully beautifully with our video footage. Super, super cool. And I'm going to show you a bunch of really useful things you can do 
from this point. Let's go ahead and download an HDRI image for free, which is essentially a 360 lighting setup for this scene. You can find a bunch of these for free on polyhaven.com. So I'll download some sunrise ones. To bring that into Blender, you click on the world options right here, click the yellow dot next to color and load in an environment texture. Now you can select the HDRI that we just saved. And now you can see how easy it really is just to bring this footage into different locations seamlessly with those light maps. If you want to change around the environment lighting, click over here in the bottom left to change your workspace to the shader editor and switch under this dropdown from object to world. Now, if you haven't done this already, we're going to enable one more plugin that comes included with Blender. So go up to edit preferences and make sure the node wrangler add on is enabled. Once you've done that, you can just select this image texture for our world environment and click control T and it'll add this easy setup for you to be able to rotate the 360 environment so you can experiment with all these different angles with how the light is reacting with our footage. Being able to visually experiment with the lighting setups like this is such a game changer, especially for making any changes on the fly. Again, this footage has a transparent background. So just for an example, I'm going to click shift A and we'll just add a 3D cube in the background and you guys will be able to see we can composite 3D objects straight from this view. It's essentially just a 2D image right in front of our camera and you have an open background to work with in 3D if you'd like. So let's take this one step further. So if we go back, you're going to find this light map extraction section here. This essentially allows you to input any image and extract an HDRI environment map from that image. This is amazing because say, for example, you're on set. Usually what you would have to do is have a special 360 degree camera to capture every single environment that you want to add VFX. Well, now with a tool like this, you can just take any 2D image, even if it's just a screenshot from your video, load it into this tool to generate to the best of its ability, a 3D environment map to match the lighting. On the flip side, a big disclaimer here. This is by no means something you should ever rely on in a professional setting. I'm not telling you to go toss your 360 cameras in the trash because AI smart click button, boom, done. These are all experimental tools that are still in development. So take everything I say with a grain of salt. The quality may not reach a professional standard, but in my opinion, if you're on a low budget, you don't have a 360 camera or you didn't take reference footage on set, this is very useful for lighting your scene as opposed to having nothing. That could all change in the future. You're going to have limitations. For example, in this case, I wasn't actually able to get this feature working in switch lights. I was getting an error saying I didn't have enough VRAM with my GPU and the process was just taking an obscene amount of time to work. But do not worry, I found an easier alternative. So this specific tool in switch light is using a third party open source model called Diffusion Light. If you look up Diffusion Light on Google, you can find the Hugging Face, which contains a Google Collab notebook set up as well as the documentation. You can use the Google Collab Notebook to generate these environment maps remotely, so you don't even have to use your own computer. It's very fast, very easy. I'm gonna walk you through how to do it in just a moment. If you are interested in how this stuff works, I also recommend you check out the documentation because it's very interesting. Essentially, they're in painting a 3D reflective ball onto your original image. Then they're unfolding that reflection into a 360 environment image. So let me walk you through how to use the Google Collab. Again, a link to it will be down below. You just have to click the play buttons for each section to initialize the code. Then you can select the image that you want to generate an environment map from. Again, click to run the section. For this one, it's showing that reflective ball I was talking about that it's in painting in. And then the final section that we're going to run is going to unfold that reflection to create the environment map, which we can download. Very easy to do. Again, it's nice not having to rely on your own PC specs to pull this off. So now that we have that 3D environment map, let's bring this all back into Blender and I'll show you how we can start to build entire 3D scenes with what we now have. So first off, if you want to use the image that we just created that HDRI from as an actual background, then you can go up to file import and select images as planes and then select the input image. For me, it's this spooky hallway with a red light. Now we can load in the HDRI environment map that we just got from the collab notebook. So load them in just like we did with the ones from Polyhaven. And there you go. Now you have your original footage matching the lighting of any background that you 
you could possibly want. Once you are at this point, you can essentially make whatever you want. As an example, I'm going to add in this creepy 3D monster, which I found on Sketchfab. I'm going to just download this model and I'll load it in and just plop it in the background right here. If we get out of camera view, you can see how simple this is. 2D plane in the front, 3D monster in the middle, 2D image background. So let's go back to camera view. I'm going to click shift A and I'll add in another light. Let's make this red to match that red glowing light in the background. And I can view this in real time and I can move it around and see how it's affecting my character in the front as well as the 3D monster in the back. Pretty mind blowing. We're going to do one more thing. I'm going to select the 3D camera and I'm going to just mess around with the depth of field option to create this sort of focus pull reveal. You can do that by lowering the f-stop setting for the camera and then adding a keyframe for the focal distance. And there you go. We have a nice cinematic shot. And this is the exact reason I encourage filmmakers to experiment with 3D because they're going into it with such an advantage, already grasping the concepts of light composition, how to manipulate a camera. If you can pair that skill set you already have with basic 3D. Like in this case, I'm going to add some very bad animation to this creepy character. So it just kind of crawls a little bit towards the camera. There you go. There's our full completed shot. I'm keeping it very basic, but it just goes to show that you can make some really cool shots without requiring advanced knowledge of Blender. I'm going to finish the scene here, but if you did want to take it a step further, you have the option of creating entire 3D backgrounds. You can track your scene and then move the camera around to create more dynamic shots. You can add in geometry nodes or different VFX particle things, really anything you want to build on this. I think that this is a great place to leave things. So I'm going to render out my scene and then I'll bring it into After Effects and I'll do some color grading and I'll add a bit of zoom and shake. All in all, again, this took under an hour to go from stock footage of a person in front of a wall to 3D shot with dynamic lighting, with a 3D animated character, and with some cinematic camera looks. So I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Every day we're getting closer to a future of people being able to bring their ideas to life all by themselves with just a computer. There's tons of info out there on ways you guys can just click a button to skip doing work. But when you have a skill set and when you have technical knowledge on some basic things, you can use these tools to overcome a lot of limitations that you would normally face in your workflow. So that's something I'm excited for. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.